Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So last night we had US retail sales which uh, came in uh, well below expectations and all of a sudden the uh, rate hike is completely off the table again pretty much. Equity markets have all rallied, the dollar has taken a bit of a, of a back seat and we've made back some of the uh, some of the, the the gains that the dollar had made against a, a variety of different currencies, and we've even seen dollar yen up and down like a yo-yo as well. So it promises to be quite a, a volatile session as ever. So if we have a look at the US 30, you can see on the back of those disappointing retail sales figures, we had a big massive rally. Um, so we're looking at 17.895 as potential resistance. We broke above the 55 period SMA. We didn't cross the zero line in the MACD, and we are looking at, uh, at the next potential resistance is at 18,000. So what difference a day makes? As a matter of fact, most global equity markets, almost all of them are all up today, especially Japan, 225, which we'll come back to in a second. It's now at 15-year highs. So looking at the UK 100, uh, not quite a rosy picture as the, as, as the US session. Came off a little bit towards the end right there. Um, you notice that it stopped below 67.71. It's still there just now, trading above the 55 period SMA. Um, and uh, if we do manage to, to get some momentum to push up above that, then 69.06 could be back on the cards. Japan 225, so dollar yen has obviously been a big driver of that, um, having almost, uh, it's above 121 right now. You can see this, this massive breakout. So there's, there's a stock on uh, the Japan 225, um, which came out with a massive dividend increase last night, actually surged about 12%. Um, and this stock uh, has got a, an unusual weighting on the Japan 225. So that's why we've seen such a, such a big move on that index versus the other markets. Not because the whole of Japan suddenly um, turned itself around in a big massive way, but um, because of this one stock and the weighting that, that has had on there. But certainly real strong technical breakout yesterday, another push higher today. Um, the longer term potential resistance, and this is, if we're at 15 year highs already, bear in mind that Japan's been um, in stagflation for a couple of decades, you are looking at 20,860 as the next potential resistance. And that's a long way away from where we are right now. So if there is any um, downwards pressure there, you will be looking at a potential springboard of 18,648 as being a support, uh, but the longer term potential resistance is a lot higher at 20,868. And the Bank of Japan is just embarking on its own stimulus measures right now as well, so things could be stacked up quite nicely there. So moving on to dollar yen, uh, you can see that 121.87 has been in play since the uh, mid-December. Uh, we've had a couple of um, nibbles at the potential resistance over the last couple of sessions, specifically there on Tuesday, where we actually post a doji candlestick formation. The last two days we've been down lower, but it's um, now these would be hammers if they're at the bottom of a downtrend, because we're at the, to at the top of an uptrend, it doesn't really count, but it gives a bit of an idea that there has been there has been selling close to resistance, but then it's been getting pushed back up by the buyers. Um, so 121.87 should be an interesting level to continue to watch for the next couple of days. And today we do have some US data that could help drive that higher. You've got PPI and you've got the um, Consumer Sentiment Survey, and that's at 12.30 UK time and 2 p.m. respectively. Moving on to crude oil West Texas, it is at the bottom of a trend. We're looking at um, 43 spot 29 as a potential support level. And it looks like the rally on West Texas crude is really sputtering out right now. So uh, I was looking that we were resonating around about $50 for a while there. Um, we are a good bit away from there just now, a good $3 away. So continued drift might be expected. So moving on to gold. Um, Interestingly, with uh, those retail sales figures disappointing and the dollar moving up slightly against the euro, and uh, yeah, so uh, so that's right. With the euro gaining a little bit of extra momentum against the US dollar, you'd expect that gold would have posted something a bit more decent yesterday. But very volatile candle, um, dodgy formation at the bottom of a downtrend, so it shows a lot of an action. Um, needs to pick a certain direction. We are moving a little bit higher this morning, but not with that much conviction. Now, if you look at the MACD and the RSI, the RSI has been oversold. It's just about to break through the 70% level, which would be indicative of a potential reversal. Not, it's not done it yet, though. It's a couple, you can see here on the, on the screen, it's a couple of pixels away. Um, and the slow stochastic there is, is in uh, oversold territory, but has not yet curved back up. So if we do continue to see drift, you are looking at 1137 as a potential support. This might be the area where a lot of gold traders are waiting to try and instigate those long-term uh, bullish positions again. So looking at euro dollar, uh, it's still an ugly picture, but you can see it managed to post a positive candle yesterday. It's a negative territory today only just. It's been lower, it's pushed itself back up. 
the technicals are obviously massively over uh, oversold, but this is driven more by the interest rate aspect and the ECB stimulus package rather than the technicals. Um, but 107.86 is the potential resistance, and 102.23 is still the potential support. Not really a huge amount to, to talk about with the uh, euro dollar right now because it's so far away from any of these potential levels. If we look at cable, it really came off again yesterday. Uh, and we are very close to one spot for 813, which is the lowest that cable has been for some time. Uh, we are looking at last summer, in fact. So summer 2013, so yeah, about two years, uh, which isn't so great for the sterling versus the USD. Sterling is actually doing okay versus some other currencies. If you have a look at like sterling euro, for example, it's okay. But against the US dollar, it's had a significant drop. In fact, if I just go to my drawing tools right here and uh, we select the price line, if you measure from July last year to now, from here, you can actually see that's down 13.62%. Um, so not a great time to be going over to the US on holiday, incidentally, when you've had a, a big decrease like that. But that just gives you a bit of an idea of, uh, of the moves that we've seen right here and uh, historically how far back that goes. So if we fast forward on to Monday to see what other economic data there is, uh, not a huge amount. Tuesday, lots of CPI. Inflation data, uh, ZDW business report from Germany, that should be quite good. Uh, going on to Wednesday, you've got um, the Bank of England MPC minutes, employment data as well, and crude elementaries. Um, and then, of course, of course, this is a big one. You have to make sure that you've got that set there. That's the FOMC um, policy decision on the 18th of March, Wednesday. And uh, this one's important because we're looking for the actual rhetoric and the statement about um, their stance on interest rates, funnily enough. So that one will be a big one, so make sure you don't miss that one. And as ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of the late going forward, and join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.